I'm uh, playing a game of Shaka here um, as a means of a, which is a, um, a miniatures rule set as a means of comparison with the game a miniatures rule set of drums and shakos. Now Shaka is an older rule set from my uh, 1990s, I believe. Drums and Shaka is from 2007 or something like that. Um, and uh, I the drums and Shaka is kind of um, I really enjoyed it for as a design, but I didn't enjoy all the die rolling and the kind of like uncertainty involved in it although I could see that as an attractive design it wasn't sort of for me so I wanted to try Shaka which is more kind of like old school where um where you take it in turns to move um all your your units um but I'm actually surprised in that I thought I was going to enjoy Shaka more but I think on the balance drums and Shaka's was more enjoyable another surprise is that um Shaka is simpler than I thought it was going to be because it's quite a long rule set but a lot of it's kind of like um just blah it's kind of like a bit quite wordy so uh the rules themselves are very simple that's nice because it's um basically you can sum it all up on you know one player aid this is the one size is really all just a uh, preparation for playing it's the other side um which you need um for the game so it, it runs very quickly it um, similar to drums and shakos. um, but it feels kind of more simplistic in that um, units sort of uh, acquire hits quite quickly, and staggers um quite quickly as well. Staggers is kind of like just a, a modifier on rolling for hit. You roll for hits on like a five or six generally. Um, a units disappearing quicker than in uh, drums and shakos, so. I think it's gonna it's gonna be the kind of game where where you know your sort of army could vanish quite quickly. I think, I think you, when the army break point, which is something like fifty percent of the units has reached, then that's game over. Um, but what I really do like about Shaco is um the preparation uh, uh in the orders because essentially you start the game, you do your deployment, and it's secretly so you, um you know usually you'd have sort of you draw a little map the one side was set up and the other uh, you would draw your setups on the map now i've drawn a little map and i'm, I'm playing solo so i've got the french are the blue and the british are the red um and this was the setup and then once you set up you um uh give your units orders there's uh four orders there's um uh attack which is any movement order um defend which uh, is not sort of well explained in the rules but i think you can move to somewhere to defend it um or you might have to change from attack order to defend once you've moved it but basically you know towards enemy territory is an attack order defend you stay in place then you can uh, go into um ha have reserve order which which means your unit sitting reserve or um timed orders and so a timed order is um you will go into attack at a certain time um or defend at a certain time then there's one last thing which is interesting is is flank attack so um it's napoleonic rule set and the french are allowed to um do a flank attack you can go on either flank you can either be shallow or deep and then you dice each turn to see if you come on at the turn that you wanted to come on. If it's a deep flank um, over the sort of halfway mark, then you, you come on a five or six. If it's shallow, it's four, five or six. So um, you set the game up in terms of deployment and also in your initial orders. And then um, each uh, commander is represented on the field. Uh, so, for example, this is the um, French commander in chief and he has two aides and they can just go out they have a movement rate if they reach uh, one of the division or what they each sort of separation of the army is called a division um in this game whether it's really a brigade or, or what have you so each one has a leader when one of the aides reaches the leader then you know you can give them that the new orders um so you can sort of in theory change two orders a turn but not necessarily the turn you want the french respond to their orders the next turn and all other nationalities take a 
turn to figure out their orders before they can respond to it. And then another th interesting um, wrinkle is that uh, the attacking side gets 20, if they're French, or 25% more units if they're any other nationality. So uh, the French turned out to be attacking this game, so they had 25% more, um, uh, which essentially are all in reserve back here. What we have is um, the game is won on uh, defeating the enemy army. So uh, we had cavalry on the flanks, uh, French uh, cavalry and horse artillery on the flank there. And then we had a French division moving up here. You can see them moving up onto the hill there. Another French division um, moving diagonally across also towards that hill. And then they have artillery division there and a kind of light infantry division in the town there. Um, in reserve status. Um, uh, they, that cavalry was in reserve but they've been moved forward to attack and then you can't see because of the shadow but there's a, sorry about that, there's um, uh, the flank has just come on. Um, okay you can see a little bit more now. Um, and uh, the British um, Central Division there was moving forwards um, but they're sort of left fighting these ones. There was a Portuguese division on this side which were moving forwards, but nobody can move it in that rough ground there except for skirmisher units. So um, as it happens, those that Portuguese division is blocked in between the town and the um, the rough ground and this uh, cavalry. The cavalry taken some damages from them, but um, have destroyed... Uh, one of the port, two of the what two of the Portuguese units. Um, so it's three units against two for the French at the moment, and uh, perhaps I'll just sort of go through a turn, just to record how this game plays. So there's five phases to a turn. The first phase is the artillery phase, um, and that ha occurs simultaneously. So. Uh, in this case, we're going to have there's heavy artillery here, there's an artillery here, there's some artillery there, but they're not going to fire, they're going to move forwards. And um, essentially, the way it works is uh, you just check the range. But at the moment, I know that each of these hits on a five or six. So the Brits are red, the French are green, that's neither of them hit. So that's the artillery fire over. Um, now we go to the next phase, which is movement. Now you have to check, so we're on the fifth turn out of 15. Um, you have to check who's got the most percentage of uh, divisions in a attack, and they get uh, to move f one of their divisions first, and then you alternate movement of divisions. So that's the French in this case, so they get to move a division first. And... Um, That is going to be, in my case, um, putting these um, French um, Dragoons and Hussars, uh, they, they're just making slight movements in, um, for um, defensive, because they've been put on defensive orders, but then being cavalry, in these rules, if they're within charge range, they have to charge a unit, and they are within charge range. This one has moved into square. These are light uh, skirmishers, so they automatically move to charge, and we will resolve that merely later. And those, um, I, I'm not bothering to measure the distances because I know they've got enough movement for all of that. So we've got a hussars charging against this square, and dragoons charging against the skirmishers. I know those skirmishers are going to be quite tight, but we, we'll see what happens with that square later. So now it's over to the Brits for movement, and they're going to want to do some movement over here, where they've got cavalry in reserve um, back, uh, being attacked on the flank by that uh, flanking French move. Okay, so the reserve cavalry hiding in the shadows here are not going to be able to move until they're engaged in musketry or melee, so they'll have to be fired upon before. Well, they can do anything. Um, and the, at present, the, um, the uh, an aid has been sent out to try and give them orders, but that's going to be irrelevant 
anyway. Um, so otherwise we've only got this and the Portuguese under move orders. And um, so I think, think these have had enough of they've weakened those French um, units enough. They're going to move forward. So now the skirmishers will move back as these move in. They have a four inches move. Okay. So that's fine. They can all move into contact. So these mini ones represent my skirmishers. Okay. That's over to the French again. Um, so that they could uh, move these up to in support, which I think they're going to definitely going to do. So these change in formation, and they will um, one inch, which takes up two inches of their movement. So these have got two more inches. Okay. Again, these change formation. And I think they're going to move straight ahead because I think that, that unit's going to disintegrate. Although they are here, they can give um, rear support in melee. Okay, so back to the Brits and um, poor Portuguese back there hemmed in. There's not much they can do. Okay, so I just moved a Portuguese into square because we we're anticipating this square disappearing. Then I staggered these so they can move into line, so they can have fire um, at the cavalry if necessary. Um, so back to the French. Uh, that means the cavalry over here can move up. Um, Ah, no, those Brits had been under um, fire, I'd forgotten, so, last turn, so, um, they can move, so, um, well, it's hard to say the Portuguese move later, um, what have we got, we got artillery, Okay, so essentially the um, uh, the British cavalry turned and charged the um, oncoming guards infantry. Uh, they unlimbered their cannon. That was promptly charged by the French chasseurs. Some French chasseurs into the side of the British dragoons there. And the rest are waiting here and have moved up their ho and unlimbered their horse artillery. Okay, so we got general French advancement up onto the mountain on all fronts essentially um, and the British are more or less doing what they were um, so now we go to small arms fire first skirmisher fire so um, essentially that's uh, just rolled in on a, uh, as long as they're within range on a 5 or 6 you get a hit okay so uh, that's a bit of skirmishing fire and then volley fire essentially um, each unit it fires simultaneously. You hit on a five or six. On a six, you would deliver two kills. But if you have a green staggered marker, um, which was from the previous hit against your morale rating, um, it's minus one. So you essentially, you only hit on a six. Um, so we just got one. This was the French roll. This was the English roll. So the French got one hit from the others, and everyone's already staggered. You don't. That's two, two staggers, that doesn't change anything. So once you're staggered, um, you're only hitting on six. So it's going to be quite slow attrition there. Um, up here we've got the elite versus the lights. Um, they exchange shooting. And um, that's, so there's no stagger. Uh, 
a little less likely to get staggered because they have a higher morale rating and, and the others are already staggered oh and i think they can just about get a pop in on the size of the elite yes so that other french light unit they also rolled a one so that's nothing there Oh, I just realised I made a mistake because these had all moved into charge, so they wouldn't have got a fire. Their fire had no effect anyway, so that's fine. So now we move on to the melee phase. Um, that happens simultaneously. With that, it's a simple die roll, so let's do these two. And um, with then modified, so the Brits get six, um, the French get two. The Brits are regular, so they add their morale rating, which is four, so they have a ten. And then they are staggered, so that's minus one, so they have nine. Um, they have flank support on one side. Ah, they, oh, they, they would have had flank support from here, so they have to be supported on both sides. So no, they're not flank supported, but they are rear supported, so that brings them back up to ten. Um, the French um, rolled a two, and they're also regular, so that brings them up to six. They don't have proper uh, flank support, they don't have even have proper rear support, it's a terrible um, organisation on my port, so they lose that melee of um, 10 against 6, so they weren't doubled, um, the loser has to fall back, so um, the French has to fall back uh, 6 inches with their back to the enemy, Like so, and uh, that they weren't doubled, um, that was just outscored, and they received kills equal to the result difference. Well, actually, they receive enough kills to destroy them, which is going to happen quite often. So, so there you see it, they've gone very quickly, it's quite bloody like that. Let's resolve this next one. So we've got more equal combat, so they're both, so that's what, 7 versus 6, they get flank support, not quite in ra range for rear support, so, and they get 1 plus 1, so that's 8 versus 6, both are staggered, so that's 7 versus 5, no change there. Um, the one, this one has more kills than opponents, they have minus 1, so that's... Um, six versus five. Um, he's actually has he got rear support? Not quite. So it's six versus five. Um, so it's the same again. So they're going to fall back, and they'll take one loss. So that's how the melee works. Okay, that the, the um. Cavalry here automatically eliminate the skirmishers and they performed a recall which stay in place and get one rally, so we'll remove one hit. And this cavalry against the square perform with their um, disordered morale, which is not so great. So that's four against three, so, uh, so that's seven and eight, and then three. Um, Plus four, so that's seven. So they're going to get a hit and fall back twelve inches. Okay, but they're blown as well. So actually, that square worked well for the um, Portuguese. I feared that it wasn't. It's a bit dangerous because if you try to go form square and you don't manage it, so roll against morale, then you're eliminated. As the cavalry fall upon you. Okay. Um, so uh, our melee's are very decisive. Um, so there's a very uh, you, you can get a tie, but then you you, you do tiebreakers. So as you melee, one of you is going to fall back and take at least one loss, maybe more. Now over here. Um, one of the British cavalry um, was bounced off as the guards, French guards there formed square. The other French guards didn't manage to form square. 
and uh, were just completely obliterated. And now we go to the command phase. Um, so then we move um, aids and change orders if possible. So um, these aids are going to come back here. Okay, so he's recalled his. No, I don't think you can recall. So okay, those aids are going to reach there. Fellows, uh, that's tricky. So he was there, there. Okay, that should be fine. So they changed their orders, and the French are staying as they are at present. And now we roll for rallies. And so, for example, the units that have fallen back could um, more than out of the four inch kind of. So in a control at up to the front of their opponents, they can try for a rally. Uh, sorry, no, that's my mistake. You don't recover um, hits. You recover from rally and or you know, sorry, and or stagger. Um, so these two remain staggered back. Uh, sorry, you recover staggers or fall back. So these two remain falled back. And uh, that's the end of the turn. Check for army breakpoints, and if not, continue.